scripted videos. I script out videos completely um, from beginning to end. I rehearse the script aloud several times. And when I'm rehearsing it aloud, that's when I cut things, things that feel repetitive, things that are not super interesting. I mean, my videos are long anyway, but if I didn't go through that revision process, th those scripted videos would be 90 minutes long. When I'm sitting down to record, I do not stick to a script 100%. It just is, I don't use a teleprompter or anything like that. I have a good memory. So what I aim to do is get the feel of the script when I'm sitting down to record. I've tried to use the teleprompter, like use the teleprompter app on my laptop. I'm not good at it. That's why I can't really be on TV. I'm not good at reading like that. Um, so I do a lot of memorization. Um, and I am always working on multiple scripts. Let's talk about analytics and SEO. Um, put keywords in the title. Because I used to be an editor of a website, I now think of video titles as headlines. I want it to be attention grabbing. I'll often use statements in my video titles, but I also want to put in as many keywords as possible. If this video is about um, Beyonce being a culture vulture, then I'm going to put Beyonce steals or something, you know, like, um, or what's the, the, I just did a live video about Carol Sanchez, right? You want to put the, you have to put the name in the title because YouTube is the biggest search engine in the world. And so a lot of people will find my videos just by searching, but also they'll find my videos because my video will autoplay after another video with a similar headline. I use a, an app called vidIQ to check the analytics of my channel. Um, under here, you can um, see the, video, the vidIQ tells you what your like to dislike ratio is. And sometimes that can be very... <laughs> It can be very dis dispiriting. Um, this is not my video, by the way. This is for another channel. It tells you your total views, your average daily views, the average daily subs, your subscribers. Um, I just, I like to know those kinds of analytics. How many people have liked it on Facebook? I like it, vidIQ. Make longer videos. I started to make longer videos when I realized that longer videos do better. If you pay attention to any of the YouTube trends, you will notice that most people are moving toward making longer videos, longer podcast type videos, um, longer scripted videos. They make more money for you and YouTube promotes longer videos because YouTube can make more money off of them. I've also found that in doing the live videos, one thing that I like is people feel deeply connected to me because I spend a lot of time with them. Um, and yeah, look at the, the channels that are really, really booming they're making longer videos. How often should you publish? Oh, the range for longer is like, well, for me, a long video is an hour, right? But that's super long. Um, and now that people are publishing their podcasts, they're going up to like, I've literally watched a two hour long YouTube video before. Um, but longer is, for a normal person is like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so... I would suggest that you publish, if you're trying to grow your channel, publish once a week. I cannot stick to a schedule. I just can't. I, my, my brain won't let me do it, but I absolutely should. And I can tell you that the months that I have grown the most, starting in March of this year, my channel grew exponentially. And that's because I published one and a half videos a week. So I think once a week is the real sweet spot um, if you're really trying to, to get things done. YouTube likes consistently consistency and it likes timeliness. So like I said, because YouTube is a big old search engine, you will really get rewarded for hitting on things that are in the news. People have asked me about my on-camera presence. I gotta tell you, it's mostly just natural. I've been performing for a long time, did a lot of speech, did a lot of debate. 
Uh, I've never been afraid in front of a camera. And this is the this is the part where I have to say everybody's just not going to be good at this. I have recorded videos with other people over the past couple of months. And a few of those videos, if you're a patron, you know this. They don't make it to the main YouTube channel. The main YouTube channel, they just get posted up on Patreon. Because there are people who just, when the camera comes on, they're just not good. But there are other people like Queen and Jay. I didn't know them from Adam. And they sat down and they were immediately great. Um, So I do think that it's just a natural talent that you either have or you don't. But I have gotten better at this by practice. Absolutely. I am better now on camera than I was five years ago because I've just gotten more experience doing it. But also... I edit my own videos. I can watch myself and see myself do weird stuff and make weird faces and look to the side and all of that. And I can make a note in my mind of like, Kim, that's weird as fuck. Like, why are you doing that? And then I can change it. I also now watch a lot of YouTube. And so I watch what other people are doing and say, oh, can I do that? And then I'll I'll adjust myself. But I gotta tell you, I think that Because we're living in an age where cameras are ubiquitous, everybody thinks that they're going to be good on camera. Everybody is not good on camera. And we just got to be okay with that. Legal stuff. Do not slander people. I'm not trying to be sued. I do not have enough money for that. Keep the film and music clips short. Like I've said, they won't necessarily take down your videos. I have lots of videos that are still up. But those videos are demonetized because I use film or music clips in a way that the owner of the clip did not agree with. Um, So back to fair use. Nobody really knows what constitutes fair use. We're all just guessing. And um, anybody, if you use a film clip or a music clip, the owner of that media, they can come and say that you've infringed on their copyright and you can try to dispute that. I don't have the resources really to dispute that stuff. It takes too much time. Also, if you lose a dispute, you get in trouble with YouTube and they can take privileges away from you. So I very rarely dispute things. Um, But there are times, and I've read about lots of instances where creators have disputed disputed the the claims that copyright holders have put on their videos and said, this is fair use. And fair use basically means I'm a cultural commentator. I am using this clip um, in a way that has positive social impact, or I'm an educator. I am using this clip in an educational way. So that stuff is covered under our laws. I am not a lawyer. That's the reason why this is not gonna be a fair use thing. All I'm trying to say is be fucking careful. Really. I'm not a lawyer. I've gotten caught up in it before. Be careful. (laughs) Let's talk about growth. 